In Vectorworks 2008, we've introduced new user-controlled object-based opacities, which can be controlled through the Attributes palette or through the Class Attributes options. One of the questions that we are recently getting here in the Tech Support Department is when a user applies an opacity to a 2D symbol or to a 2D object that has a 3D representation and that 3D object is not taking on that opacity or transparency level. To demonstrate this, I have a file which I've created which is of a rooftop deck. In this rooftop deck, I have an umbrella which I've created as a hybrid symbol which has a 2D and 3D representation. The 2D part of this symbol has an opacity level set to 60% so that I can see the objects underneath of it. If I go to one of my saved views and go to the umbrella perspective, I can render this in a final quality render work setting. And I can see here that my 3D object of the umbrella is not rendering with that same opacity or transparency that I want. To get the 3D representation of this umbrella to have the same transparency as my 2D look, I'd want to go ahead and edit this 2D symbol. To do this, I'm simply going to return back to my top plan view, double click on my umbrella symbol, and access the Edit Symbol dialog box. I'm going to select my 3D component and click on Edit. Here I have my 3D symbol, which I can see in my Object Info Palette is an Extrude. Right now, this 3D symbol is just taking on the same solid fill color as my 2D object, but it does not have the option to set the opacity. So to create this 3D object to have the same opacity as my 2D object, I'm going to have to create a texture to have the same transparency. To create this texture, I'm simply going to go click on my resource button in my resource browser and select a new resource in, and it's going to say the name of my document. In this case, it's the tech tip for transparencies. I can go here from my menu options and select RenderWorks Texture, and I get my Edit Texture dialog box. From here, I'm going to name my texture to be my umbrella texture. Go to the color options, click on the drop down menu, and select Plain Color. From here, I'm able to click on the color drop-down box and choose from my Active Document color palette. At first, I'm seeing tons of colors here and several oranges, which may not be the same attribute color as my 2D object. To narrow down my choices, I'm simply going to go to my uh, color palette options, have my active colors and active documents selected, and choose Purge Unused Colors. Get a dialog box asking me if I'm sure. Click Yes. And what this is going to do is it's going to narrow down the choices and get rid of any colors that I have not used in this document. Now I'm able to choose the same orange that I used for my attribute color. Click OK. Now I can go into the transparency settings choose a plain transparency, edit the transparency, and change the level to about halfway. Now I'm going to click OK. I can see that my texture updates here in my preview window, and I may want to make it just a little bit more transparent, so I'm just going to tone it down. Click OK. Click OK again. Now I can see that texture in my resource browser and since I have my extrude selected I'm just going to click on my render tab in my object info palette click on the texture drop down box 
and choose the umbrella texture. Now I'm going to exit my symbol, return to my saved umbrella perspective, deselect the umbrella, and then render and a final quality render works. Here I can see that my umbrella symbol now renders with a transparent texture so that I can see the objects underneath the umbrella for client presentation. Although this isn't a more realistic representation of the umbrella, it's a way that you can apply transparent textures to other objects to give the same effect.